A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said to the Jewish people, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children, and to those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness to deliver them from death and preserve them by a famine. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. The earth is full of the goodness. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel. Mary Magdalene stayed outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I do not know where they laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But to go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he had told her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Uh, you learn in, uh, or at least you talk, the way you learn is something else. But you taught in seminary that uh, you never began or end with an apology. I'm going to leave that aside. I apologize that we were a few minutes late, and that's my fault. Uh, although I could say that I wanted to be on time with the congregation, uh, I won't. Uh, although I just did, didn't I? But, but anyway. Um, so I apologize for that. Uh, and uh, I'll try to be brief, because we're long into the morning. Um, two days ago, we celebrated Easter, the source of true life. Not only eternal life, but life here on earth. Because Easter is not just about high in the sky when you die. It's also about living a new life here. That's what it's about. Can you turn that thing off, please? of life. And that issue has become front and center in the Catholic Church today. And front and center in our country. Now please don't give me this politics stuff. I'm telling you, don't do that. It will not go well. It will not go well. Uh, it's not about that. It's about Pope John Paul the great pope of defending the sacredness of human life. That's what it is. And we have crossed a point in this country where we've gone from abortion. Y'all want to argue about that? Fine. It's nonsense. But okay. To infanticide. We now have states that allow the killing of the born. And as I told you before, I worked in a hospital for 30 years, taught in medical schools. When a child is in the birth canal, that child is born. That child is born. And what we have become is a nation that has become comfortable with infanticide. Now you have to let that roll around your head for a moment. Especially if you're a Catholic. Because the Catholic voice has been the consistent, solid, vocal voice against the killing of the unborn. Today, today, this Tuesday, in Washington, D.C., was the National Catholic Prayer Breakfast in Washington, D.C. And the theme was life. Uh, I hate, I can't stand, Frank, talking about my experiences. That's totally irrelevant. It, it doesn't matter. But, when I was a seminarian, and uh, the greatest principle, I'll talk about her, the greatest principle I ever had, Sister Mary Henry, seminar. I think she's still alive and still functioning, actually, which is amazing. I thought you would have died a long time ago, but anyway, you know, as I've always said, uh, old principles.
principals never die, they just lose their faculties. But, uh, uh, the, uh, she hired me, I was still in the seminary, to teach three classes in religion at Mercy Academy, girls high school in New Orleans, all girls high school. And one day I get a, a note that Sister Henry wants to see me after class. Well, it's usually not to tell you that you won the lottery, right? I'm going, oh God, here we go. What did I do? And you know, like a grammar school kid, I'm going through my head thinking of all the things that I did. So I went into the, I went into my office. Very, very good young, very good religious sister, Sister Mercy. And uh, she said, uh, I have a request. Oh, a request. Mm. Okay. Yes, sister. And she said, uh, I would like to ask you if you would be head of the religion department. I said, uh, oh, oh, okay. She said, but we have a challenge. I figured that, that was coming. You know, as always, you know, you, you always, it's like confession. You always say the bad ones last. You know? uh, and uh, I said, what's the challenge? And I won't say the family's name. But she said, they, they lived block and a half away from the school, which was up by the way over. And uh, she says, uh, I taught the daughter. I had her in class. Brilliant student. Excellent, excellent young lady. Absolutely excellent. And uh, I didn't do her wedding because she had an uncle who was a priest in Belize. And he came in to do the wedding. And they have a daughter, young girl, and uh, she has uh, Down syndrome. As we once upon a time said, I don't know what we say today, but she was retarded or handicapped, whatever. If you get offended by those terms, I don't know what we say today. I mean, I'm sure there's something more exactly, but okay. And they want her to go through the school, through the four years. Uh, would you have any objection to that? I said, I have no objection to that. None, I had no objection. She could sit in on your religion classes and so I said, absolutely. Yes. And when I'm telling you, that girl, I'm calling her a girl. Okay, if that offends you, young lady. Uh, my God, everybody gets offended by something. Uh, that girl. There's a commercial on television. I think it's pedigree. Dog food or something. I don't know what it is. I don't have a dog. I think it's better. Dogs bring out the best in us. Well, this girl was not a dog. <coughs> These snooty, self-important, self-entitled girls in, in school, because that's what it was, upper class thing, and that, that's what she, this girl that had, uh, I'll just say, Down syndrome, she did. And the doctors wanted her to be aborted, wanted her to be killed. 
because she had a life not worthy of life. My Lord. But that's where we are. Life not worthy of life. Well, let's go around to the old folks homes. Let's go around to the hospitals and kill all those people that we think are not worthy of life. My Lord. You have to, you, you can't be serious. But, oh, they are serious. Oh, they're serious. <laughs> uh, an elderly person, an unborn person, a person who's born now. Because I've talked to the doctors. I've talked to the OBGYN doctors. And when that child is in the birth canal, that child is born. The child is born. Say whatever you want. You can listen to all the ideology and all of the propaganda and so on and so forth. That child is born. And we're going to kill that child. We have become a nation of infanticide. That's what's happened. And this girl who had, has Down syndrome, she taught all of these self-centered, entitled, uh, pumped up girls, how to be generous, how to be kind, how to be caring. Because they took, they took care of her. They made sure she got to class. They made sure she had lunch. Before that, they were all into themselves. They were. Believe me. <laughs> I know. They had a fool with them. Uh, it was all about them. And this girl. This little girl. She taught them how to be other directed. How to get out of themselves. She taught them a lesson I could never teach them. She taught them by how? By her presence. That's how she taught them. By her presence. She had trouble speaking? Yes. Trouble comprehending? Yes. But by her presence. She gave them an example that I could never give them. Could never give them. That was not possible. And uh, we used to have a mass in the morning on graduation day and the graduation ceremony at night. And I would give out the diplomas. Sister Henry would call their name and I'd give out the diploma. And they called out, and I'm not going to say the girl's name. They called the name. They called the name. And every one of those students stood up and applauded. It was the best diploma I ever gave out. Hmm. Yeah, she went through. She stayed there four years and stayed in the school. And she was a far better teacher than I could ever be. Because she taught by her example and by her life. But that was a life not worth living. Huh. My God, you got to be kidding. <coughs> There's so many, there's so many lives like that. And we're right after Easter. He's not to be found among the dead, but among the living. What he is, it's among the living. And we can't write people off just because we don't think that they are worthy of living. They are. They are. And sometimes the people we most think 
Goodbye. Those are the most valuable. Those are the most important. So, on this uh, Tuesday, in the octave of Easter, let us thank God, please, for the gift of life, the gift of all life, of all lives, the sick, the deformed, the elderly, whatever. They are a gift. They're a gift to us. And they all have something to give. Please. And we thank Almighty God on this Tuesday in the Octave of Easter. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's please stand.